So friends, uh, again, I'm just tickled to be here with you. And I would love to start us off with a brief mindful minute. So let's pause and set aside whatever we've been focusing on throughout the day to the best of our ability. Just, you know, I'm not asking you to get rid of it. I'm not asking you to clear the mind. I'm just asking you to notice whatever might be maybe a ripple, uh, a ripple based on the stone toss in the pond of your day, a ripple that's still floating through. Simply notice it and ask whether attending to that ripple over the next period of time that we have the opportunity to be together will actually be of service to your heart. If it will, in some way, by all means, have a notepad handy. Write down insights that come through about whatever's happening in your life that you're hoping that resting in presence might inform. Maybe you have some inquiry in your life that you're exploring that you're hoping your meditation practice will, will inform in some way. I, I love pointing out that insights arise in the mind of spaciousness. So listen to what arises, honor it. And if you're in a moment in which you can, in a sense, set aside the day, feel your feet on the floor and begin with three collective long, deep inhalations and exhalations, then I would like to invite that. Three of the longest and deepest. Inhalations and exhalations you've taken yet today. And then when you're ready, I have another question for the chat, please. What's alive for you right now? What's here and now? What are you present to in this moment? This is an opportunity for us to bring all voices into the room, if you will. Curiosity, peacefulness, community, huge gratitude, gardens, the coming of spring, anxiety, kindness, the breath, expectation, the sharing of space, calm, wading through mail, the news, the day's activities, the rush of everything, mold, unfortunately, Gratitude, warmth, anticipation, calm, anxiety about my sick kitty, self-awareness, purring in my lap, worry. Gratitude to be here and have some quiet time and space with community. Awareness of my body sensations at the end of the day. Worry. Cold. Missing my granddaughter. Skiing, connecting with my body, body, all the fullness of life, letting go, awareness of vulnerability, overwhelmed, still got work to do, fear, grief, excitement. Friends, thank you so much. You can see the varied nature of what's here now. And 
the recognition that awareness itself has room for all of it. So thank you for bringing all of you to this moment. What I would like to do this evening, I came in quite, again, tickled, delighted to share a little glimpse of my recent book with you. This is a book that I feel so honored that uh, Dr. Rick Hansen read from cover to cover and called glowing about it and um, blurbed it. <laughs> I feel so, so, so honored that he was so supportive of this project. The book is called The Heart of Who We Are, Realizing Freedom Together. And I believe the last time I came to this community, I was right in the throes of working on it. So it's really sweet to come to you now and to have this book out in the world. And I wanted to share some pieces of this book with you. And specifically for tonight's meditation, I thought I would guide a contemplation of sorts. And I call it that because this meditation will have a bit more talking than I would normally do. So in a sense, I wanted to prep you for the fact that the meditation itself will be a contemplation and it will be a, a, a teaching that I'm inviting you to absorb through direct experience rather than, for example, just um, talking to you about this experience or rather than having a meditation which has a little bit of guiding but mostly silent silence, which I also love and, and often will guide. So this is going to be a bit more of a contemplation I'm inviting direct experience. I'm inviting you to rest in the mind of inquiry. So come into the position you would like to be in for the duration of the meditation, which will be about, I noticed uh, from Rick's structure that it's normally about 35 minutes or so. It'll be about that. Come into the position that's most comfortable for you for this guided contemplation. I invite you to notice whatever arises through this experience. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You might even think of it as a guided imagery of sorts. I wanted to bring this meditation to you, to this community, because I know that this is a community that, like I have in my own practice, has found great benefit in object-based meditations. So meditations that use various objects like sound, sensation, or the breath as anchors, as support for training the attention to return to the present moment when it wanders and to consistently guide the attention to the refuge of presence. For tonight, I wanted to very intentionally bring in a shifting of approach. This contemplation is an invitation to slow down and explore your direct experience within this open field of spaciousness. So even though there are many questions in this, I'm not inviting mental noodling, but rather inquiry and resting. So rather than focusing the attention rather than directing it or training it. I 
I want to invite you now to soften it. Sometimes I'll use the analogy of a flashlight. If the light of the flashlight is your attention and the attention lands on various objects throughout the day, like thoughts and emotions, rather than having your practice be to redirect that light of your attention to something else that's here in the present moment, like the breath, which is also another object, just, you know, a more subtle one. Begin this meditation by visualizing that the light of your attention is gently relaxing back into its source. So the light is slowly releasing back into the flashlight itself. The light, your attention is releasing. Releasing objects, it's free now to rest. The rest and awareness itself. Allow the attention to rest in its source. as you rest in your direct experience of being aware. From this experience, how might you describe what's inherently and fundamentally true? What is true about your true nature? about your very being what what is true about your very being what qualities are present If you were to give words to what in truth has none, how would you describe your true nature? A 
it's very different to touch the experience of true nature, to know it, to rest in it, to move through the world from the recognition of this true nature versus identifying with an illusion of a self that is separate from life and trying to then attain those very same qualities to try to be peaceful, to try to be accepting, to try to be more liberated. Awakening is the recognition that we are that which is already liberated. We've been confused about who we are. We've been confused about what we are. Awareness is inherently awake. Awareness is inherently peaceful, unlimited, vast. Awareness is fundamentally open and unconditionally accepting. Infinite consciousness, which I'm using interchangeably with awareness, is inherently free. When we say our true nature is awareness, it's simply one way to point to who we truly are versus who we've been conditioned to see ourselves to be. We're conditioned to perceive ourselves as separate body minds, separate selves with separate experiences. From this conditioned perception of who we are, we see ourselves as the subject of the story. We're in relationship with, quote, other, as if other weren't the same as us, as if we didn't share the same being. There are many ways we could talk about our true nature while remembering that language fails us. The true nature that's undivided, not separate, that's infinitely whole, innately aware. Our true nature, our actual identity is identityless, unbound by the perception of separation.
It is not defined by I, me, mine from an egoic sense. It's not separate from others. It's not separate from anything. It's not bound by time. Free yourself from the stale and outdated idea of, quote, my body and my mind. In the same way that we grip in the mind onto our conditioned thoughts and beliefs, we grip in the body. These constrictions in the body are like flags planted in the ground claiming, this is me. This constriction is the ego, the activity of mind that views itself to be separate from life, taking a stand. Rather than identifying with this small, separate self that takes a stand in a specific place that's in relationship with objects, thoughts, feelings in a specific way. Rather than taking a stand as ego, rather than enhancing the activity of the conditioned mind, which is all the ego actually is, Take a stand as presence. Take a stand as awareness. It's an open stance, a stanceless stance. Conditioned activity, resisting, approval seeking, comparing, efforting, doesn't belong to you. It arises in you. You, this open, luminous awareness. Rest in aware knowing. Rest in aware being. All things arise, pass, and dissolve. 
Take this stanceless stance as presence and notice that it's not a hard, fixed stand at all, but rather the intimate knowing of your own being. Simply go straight to the refuge of your very being. And pay attention to what's arising in this moment. As I mentioned, this isn't a standard guided meditation. It's a contemplation in which I'm uh, inviting direct experience. So notice any conditioned voices but I don't know how to do this. Or I can't do this. Or things should be different. This should be different. It's okay. If what I'm pointing to feels difficult to access today, simply let the imagination play for a moment. And if you came in and you were so hungry for silence, to be in community in silence, just turn down the volume on my voice for the rest of this period of meditation. Enjoy silence. Enjoy your practice. But if you'd like to continue with me, let the imagination play. Just especially if it, this feels difficult to access, Consider a moment in your past when you had the direct experience of just being. Perhaps you were resting in nature somewhere, perhaps by a creek or the beach, listening to the waves. Perhaps you were in bed at the end of the day feeling easeful. This sense of okayness, this fineness, this ease. This is your very being. Simply sink the attention now into the refuge of your being. Your being has nothing to do with the content of your life. And perhaps it's not a specific place that ignites this. Maybe you're just washing the dishes, but resting in yourself, feeling easeful, simply being. Let it be simple. We can get so lost in the world of objects that we think of this refuge as something far away or even esoteric. There's nothing esoteric about your own being.
Allow yourself now to be freed from this world of objects. Dropping, sinking, releasing into being. We all know this place because it's the most intimate experience we have. It's ever present, a placeless place. Meditation gives us the opportunity to establish this being as our refuge. Remembering the refuge of your very being is a deep expression of love, emerging from the very thing we long for. We long to know the refuge of our very being. Happiness without cause. We all long for the very thing that we are. Rest is this. We're always welcome here. We are here, always. We simply sometimes forget. Allow yourself to stabilize in the experience of knowing this aware, luminous being as you. You are the brilliance of awareness. The luminosity of being. that we fall for the distortion that being human means we're separate can be problematic. That's when great troubles arise. Awareness is shared awareness. There may be many thoughts and perceptions, just as there are many body minds, but there's only one awareness. Unlimited awareness shines in each body, in each mind. A 
Take this stanceless stand as awareness. Welcoming everything in you. Embracing everything in you, loving everything in you. Simply being. You. Awareness. And then friends together, bringing our attention to the feeling of our feet on the floor. Perhaps wiggling your fingers and taking another deep inhalation and exhalation, just as we did at the beginning of the time together. <clears throat> 